What if bird bugs actually happened? We all have days where we just don't want to leave the house. Netflix's movie Bird Box shows us that maybe we were right to stay in our PJs. Not just stuck in this household that you never leave. Why should I leave? I have you to get me groceries. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Based on Josh Mallerman's post-apocalyptic novel of the same name, the film follows a group of survivors in a world where mysterious creatures are causing mass suicides. See them, and you're a goner. How would this play out in real life? We are going on the trip now. It's going to be rough. It's going to feel like it's going on for a long time, so it's going to be hard to stay alert. It's going to be even harder to be quiet, but you have to do both. You have to do every single thing I say, or we will not make it. In Mallerman's novel, mass panic sets in fast. A handful of murder suicides in Russia, Alaska, and Canada, and people all the way down in Michigan are hiding indoors. Of course, in the real world, murders, suicides, and even murder suicides happen all the time. As in the movie adaptation, chaos would only really break out once reports became widespread and local. At first, the link between suicides and sight might not be obvious. Mallerman has CNN report that the victims all saw something, but it's not clear what this is based on, since some cases don't seem to involve witnesses. In the movie, survivors see the horrified stares of victims firsthand and are provided with convenient exposition about demonic entities and our worst fears. It's full of mentions of demons or spirit creatures. People who actually seek these creatures almost always describe the encounter as, as, as with the entity that takes on the form of your worst fears or your deepest sadness or your greatest loss. But in real life, many of the initial survivors might witness only the bloody aftermath. Until, of course, it was too late. The spread of information about the creatures, and in fact our overall chances of survival, would depend in large part on our communication networks. Although you might want to avoid that Instagram live stream just in case. Avoid social media. Use radio. In the source material, media communications continue for months, which would allow us to coordinate survival strategies. In the screen version, however, the presence of the creatures seems to disrupt communication networks and almost everyone is dead, in which case we'd see electrical grids fail within days. I don't think the phones are working right now. Okay. Let's assume the worst case scenario and that we're totally isolated. Our first task after blocking the windows would be to blindfold up and gather supplies. Our neighbors' homes would be the closest sources for food and medicine. For the same reason, though, we'd need to defend our own homes, necessitating barricades and weapons. This is my house. I have to defend it. Given high enough survivor rates, looting and violence would increase as resources became scarce, with smashed windows and open doors proving especially dangerous. Hey, how long is our food gonna last? Not much longer. Because some of us don't understand the concept of rationing. Grocery stores and pharmacies in particular would become high-priority targets. Even if a centralized government and military survived in some form and martial law were declared, most areas would be reduced to anarchy. And there'd be more survivors than you'd think. More than 21 million people in the U.S. report visual impairments, and about a million are legally blind. A huge advantage if the world went all bird box on us. In fact, blinding ourselves and our children using household chemicals or makeshift surgical techniques might be our best bet for long-term survival. In a world of the blind, canes might become common, as would string and fishing line for the outdoors. With a little tinkering, repurposed proximity sensors could prove invaluable. Some of us might even become proficient at human echolocation, which, believe it or not, is a real thing. In a louder, you're in an open space. Do you hear that? But if they're softer, something is very close. For the still sighted, forays outside would have to remain short to minimize the risk of blindfold mishaps. Plus, it would just be damn scary out there, what with the vengeful supernatural entities and all. Oh, and the insane people who've become the creature's dedicated disciples. I've seen the truth! Take your blindfold off! <laughs> Birds might become man's new best friend, used as portable alarm systems. A pop-up tent would also come in handy, although not something we'd want to be spending the night in. Long distance travel would be virtually impossible. Hey, maybe we could just squint a lot or peek between our fingers. Would that work? One of you is gonna have to look. It would be a hell of a risk, and again, we'd be a lot better off just staying home. On the upside, we'd finally have a reason to stay in our PJs 24-7. All that time indoors, however, would put us at increased risk of vitamin D deficiency, weakening our bones and muscles, and worsening our odds when it came to cancer, heart disease, and even depression. Throw in a limited diet, and most survivors would probably look a lot more like Viggo Mortensen in The Road than Trevante Rhodes in Bird Box. If you have biceps this massive five years into the apocalypse, then you're doing pretty well for yourself. 
Of course, since we'd be cooped up inside most of the time, exercise would be a good way to stave off cabin fever. If you like a good book or board games, well, guess what? You're in paradise. Sort of. How do you like it? <laughs> The global population would be decimated, but there would still be hope for the human race. Eventually, survivors would find each other and form communities and new means of communication. We could rebuild, creating a new civilization designed with sightlessness in mind, and learning to live with our demons. All of us, collectively, are making the end of the world great again! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.